Wrapping up now. What's up, Get Fit fam? Welcome back to Authentic Alphas with your boy Allende. So today we are obviously in the gym, and what we're gonna get into is a bicep workout. It's a special request video uh, for a subscriber by the name of Frankie. So Frankie got some skinny ass arms. Nothing new there, but we're gonna help you out today, buddy. So I legit probably have at least a dozen bicep workouts but um the thing is is that they all do something completely different man like completely different but uh for guys who are not you know gym rats or you're not into the sport of bodybuilding you guys pretty much have some simple goals man the goals are really simplistic like you guys either want to get bigger or you want to burn fat you know what i mean that's all that's all most people really want to do but um it gets very very particular very precise um, as you get further and deeper into it so what i'm going to focus on today is a workout that is extremely efficient for adding value just straight up size uh to the bicep capacity so it's uh it's in my opinion pretty much only good for that but um it's something i discovered a few years back and i was able to get my arms significantly bigger or at least my biceps significantly bigger obviously i do some pretty sophisticated shit for uh triceps as well as shoulders but i've pretty much you know mastered getting the results with pretty much every body part i mean every body part is uh it's got its own little tweaks and own little hacks I've had some struggle areas myself, but my struggle areas ended up being my strong point in a lot of cases because I had to really, really figure out how to stimulate those areas and how to, how to get some results. It's not as simple as you would think. There's tons of advice out there online. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'd say 90% of it is bullshit. Um, also, you have a lot of basic stuff still floating around as if it's new so I've always gone out of my way to find some really really um, unique uh, methods that are like proven and work and I wouldn't share anything with you guys that um, you know that I don't know for a fact um, works and will get you some breakthrough results so it's been a while since I um, studied, studied this technique but it's something along the lines of increasing the mitochondria so i'm not uh too like i don't remember the exact terminology and what it does but more importantly frankie what i remember is if this shit worked like a mug so the overall concept is there's going to be absolutely no rest um in this workout it's actually pretty short but uh it's hella intense and difficult and um basically what you're gonna do is uh i mean i guess you, you like beginner guys could start off with i i would say maybe four to five sets me i do five to eight sets is how i started off today i'm only doing six because i'm really just kind of like show, showing you guys how, how how this goes uh, i don't i don't do it anymore i'm gonna be honest with you because my, my bicep is already like like as big as I need it to be or want it to be, but it was a struggle area. So what you do is you first, you know, gonna do a, a light set to warm up. You could do that on cables. Um, you could do that on one of the stationary machines. I mean, you guys could warm it up a little bit with the cables, super light. And what we're gonna be using is dumbbell. So let me show you my lightest dumbbell. So my lightest dumbbell is gonna be 
25. I'm gonna start with 25, um, but you guys should start with about five pounds or 10 pounds, dead serious. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna decide whatever your max is and count the dumbbells backwards from your max. If you're gonna do six sets, you're gonna count six dumbbells down. So for example, if your max is 30, which I know a lot of guys is, I guess that's pretty, pretty average for a grown man, would be about 30 pounds, 35 pounds on the dumbbell. So if your max dumbbell curl is 35 pounds, then you're gonna back it down. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, uh, five. Well, that's seven, sorry, so so uh, 10 would be your minimum. So you're gonna do 10 pound dumbbell curls to failure. You're gonna rest for uh, one to three minutes. Me personally, I'm 60 seconds or less, bro. But you know, you'll get there. So you know, in, in the beginning stages, you're gonna need about three minutes rest. So give yourself about three minutes. Then you're gonna hit the 15 pound dumbbell, same thing to failure. Give yourself a three minute break. Um, then you're gonna go ahead and go, what, to the 20? Uh, same thing, three minute break, 25, three, pound, uh, three minute break, 30, three minute break, right? Then you're gonna go back down the other way. So it's basically a pyramid. You're gonna go from the lightest dumbbell all the way up to whatever your max is, and then you're gonna come back down. The thing is, is that in the beginning, you're only gonna do three minute breaks, right? The next time you do this movement, you should be able to only take two and a half minute breaks. Then the next time, two minute break. Then the next time, one and a half minute break. Then the next time, one minute break. You guys get the you, you get the pattern that I'm, that I'm that I'm showing you. So this is a movement that is it's pretty easy to progress this workout, but the idea is you do not rest any more than three minutes. That's the idea, and you just hit the other one. And the idea is you're going to keep the muscle under constant. Um, Mechanical overload is what we're looking for on this one. All right, so that's a little bit different than just stress in general or tension in general. You're looking for mechanical overload, meaning that what you're aiming for is that failure every time. And I guarantee you, you'll get a sick pump, but more importantly, you're gonna force the muscle to grow in the shortest uh, period of time. And uh, what you're trying to do on a cellular level is similar to, to what steroids would do. So I know that a lot of you guys out there say dumb shit like, oh, he's big because of steroids. Like, listen, <laughs> this is always somebody that knows absolutely nothing about bodybuilding and nothing about gear. There are a lot of guys that are able to get big, um, natural, and there's a lot of guys that are able to stay big. So um, me personally, I can go a long time all natural, still maintaining all my size. Strength gains will go down, of course, but that's more where gear is gonna help you is actually in the strength and the energy and the ability to recover in a short period of time. But as far as actually stimulating the muscle and getting bigger, you can do that all natural, all right? So stop saying dumb shit. Stop uh, acting like everybody that's bigger than you is bigger than you because they're taking something. They're probably just bigger than you because they're working a hell of a lot harder uh, and they actually have a sound plan that's gonna work. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it from 25 all the way up to 50 and then back down. All right, guys, so check me out. What we're doing is straight up six sets, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. <laughs> Some of you might notice that I'm sipping it in my wrist. That's just because I like to have a peak on my biceps. I would like much more of a peak, but who has time for that? But if you want those Arnold Schwarzenegger peaks, it's all in the sipping which is basically just turning the wrist. So you can pull up in somewhat of a hammerhead, turn and go back down, but you do it as one fluid motion. Don't be acting like some awkward robot. Have some flow to it, have some swag to it. Make sure you're breathing. Exhale as you contract. Inhale on the negative. What? 
So the reason why I started with the 25 is just because like, if I didn't, I'd be here all fucking day, man, to be honest with you. A lot of times these weights feel pretty damn light until I get up to about 35, 40 pounds. Dumbbell curls feel real light to me. But it's because I invested a lot into doing them. Because I always preferred free weights over bars for whatever reason. That's just me personally. It's not that they're better, I just, I just prefer them. I just like the range of motion and the freedom. All right, so my 25s. I kick it with you guys for like, I don't know, I guess one or two minutes. And also, I was gonna say to you guys, so yeah, man, for you guys that wanna grow, I recommend training fasted, but eating before you work out, which isn't a contradiction. What I mean is, eat something with a lot of carbs, a lot of glycogen, some fiber would be nice too. Protein isn't that big of a deal until the post-workout meal, but it also doesn't hurt. The thing about the protein is it's gonna slow up your digestion some, so I wouldn't go too heavy on the protein, especially not beef or pork, maybe some fish or some poultry. Um, but anyhow, yeah, try to eat a good three hours before you train. That way you can kind of get it out of your system before you get into it. Drink a lot of water, and if you can, uh, you know, go ahead to the restroom and go ahead and clear yourself out, that's always a plus. But yeah, training fasted is just, it's a good look, man. It's uncomfortable at first, but your body definitely gets used to it, so much so that you might actually not want to work out with food in your stomach after, after you get used to it. You probably feel nauseous. So let me go ahead and get these 30s. I don't worry about counting. A lot of you guys keep on asking me how many reps. Really, really try not to ask dumb questions, bro. And I talk to you guys like that because that's what it is. You know, you're on the football field, you're in the gym, you're in the basketball court, leave all that sensitive shit at home. So I back on a bitch, all right? So if somebody says, yo, shut up, just do it. Stop worrying about reps. That means shut up, just do it. Stop worrying about reps. Don't be like, oh, you gotta talk to me like that. Y'all kill me with that shit. The reason why you shouldn't be worrying about reps other than to track your progress is because you don't even want to set that mental limitation for yourself, number one. And number two, if you're pushing yourself, then how the heck are you going to estimate how many reps it's going to be ahead of time? So personally, I just don't even bother counting them. I just go for the feeling. And when I feel myself coming to failure, that's when it's enough reps. To contract and then the amount of time it takes you to get back down to the starting position from the negative, that's all stuff we could talk about later. I'm just focusing on um, what Frankie requested, which is just a bicep workout that's going to get the arms bigger. Now notice how I'm not going all around the gym and doing all these other different things. I'm literally just doing one movement, but doing it 12 times, all right? And there's a reason for that. When there's a movement that's hitting the muscle precisely how you want to hit it, it doesn't make sense to move around and do all this other stuff because what's going to happen is all exercises aren't created equal. So it's a matter of where you feel it the most, where you get the most out of the leverage. And um, when it comes to biceps, bicep curls, actually, you do hit a large percent um, of the maximum leverage that you're gonna get to train that particular muscle just because of how the bicep works. Um, but I will do another bicep video as soon as somebody requests it, breaking down what are the three functions of the bicep muscles and how you can effectively hit all three um, in one workout. Because a lot of guys don't realize that uh, each group of muscles, their 
responsible for uh, a, a collection of movements. So a lot of you guys think that this is all the bicep does. This is not all the bicep does. The bicep uh, brings the forearm, you know, up, up to the shoulder, but it also supinates the wrist as well as brings the arm up like that, which of course you would think is your interior delt, but it's actually both the bicep and the interior delt. So with that being said, this movement isn't the only thing that works the bicep is what I'm trying to say. And you're not working the bicep fully by just doing this. But for what we're doing today, this is definitely gonna put some, uh, some size on, them, on those guns. You shouldn't have to ask me any questions about form because I'm showing you rather than telling you. And if you think I'm using a lot of momentum, that's just you thinking I'm using a lot of momentum. It's actually extremely controlled. Even when I get up to the heavier weights, I probably still won't be uh, using much momentum. But nothing wrong with hitting the front double bicep. Side chest. So yeah, man, a lot of y'all be like, damn, these arms is big. Well. This is one of the programs that actually put the most density on my bicep, I would say. And I used to do a ton of things for bicep. But hey, you live and you learn. I'm just trying to save you young boys some time. I spent a lot of time in the gym. I don't want to use the word waste, but I did spend a lot of time in the gym. Training and training. And thinking that I'm getting results, thinking that I'm getting gains. Cause I was you know, making improvements or whatever. But um, it wasn't until I really started hitting the books and um, doing some actual outside of the gym studying that I started really breaking through. So in my experience, it's been what I've learned outside of the gym that's helped me the most in the gym, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> so trial and error is really good to see what works from what you've heard of, of what you've um, thought of. But in the gym, it's not gonna be necessarily that good for you as far as new information, if that makes any sense. So studying anatomy and even physics has helped me a lot in understanding the best ways to work uh, the body. Frankie got me working too damn hard, man. I don't work that hard in the gym anymore, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not even so much that I've gotten lazy, it's just... I don't really need no more gains, man. Yeah, I'm more, I'm more focused on cardio, finding my discipline again so that I can diet. Diet is kicking my ass, I really don't want to do it, but I need to... Uh, I need to get my diet game back on point so that I can get super, super shredded for the spring. 
But yeah, man, y'all, y'all gotta go hard. Y'all gotta push it, push it to the limit. I don't even, um, I don't necessarily miss those times. Not that I didn't like it, I loved it. At some point in time, you gotta, you gotta enjoy it. But um, right now, it's all about maintaining. But y'all dudes need to find the inspiration. Get your asses in the gym, stop making excuses. Learn to love it. And stop rushing the gains. I think the problem with, with most guys is that either you lack the motivation or the consistency to get the gym done, or you're in the gym, but you're too busy worrying about the results. You're too busy worrying about what you're trying to accomplish rather than just enjoying the process. That's the problem with you guys. You guys don't know how to get obsessed with the process. So I'm getting obsessed with, with, with what you want to look like and what gains you're trying to get, man. That's, it's, that's not what it's about. You know what I mean? You want it to sneak up on you. You want to be grinding, focusing on the process, on um, the goals as far as the work is concerned, and you want the gains to sneak up on you. You want to be like, damn, what the hell? Damn, I done got, oh snap, damn, I done got, you know what I mean? You want the gains to sneak up on you. But all of that, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Nah. I'm starting to feel heavy because I haven't eaten. Sometimes I put a little hammers in there. Sometimes. I think the 50s is going to be all hammer. get the idea, so I'm gonna crack this 50. And um, I don't think y'all need to watch me go back down the pyramid, but you pretty much get the idea. You're gonna go up and then you're gonna come back down. And I guarantee you for the next three days, maybe even four, your biceps are gonna be screaming, but they are gonna grow. And another thing, um, you guys got to know how to push yourself and, um, you know, get it in. But at the same time, you got to know how to give your, give your body enough time to, to rest and recover. So, for example, something like this should keep you off of back and biceps, I would say, for at least four or five days. At least. And that's, and that's if you feel good, you know, after four or five days, if you don't feel any soreness anymore. Um, then, then crack it. If, if you do feel soreness after four days, four or five days, if you're still sore, what you do is you go ahead and you hit that, that muscle group again, but only one to three sets and extremely light reps of 30 or higher. And that's after eating. Because right now I'm not talking about burning any fat or, or, or um, or, or shredding down. What I'm talking about is putting on size. So when you're trying to put on size, you should be eating good. You know, about three hours before you train, you should be eating good about an hour after you train, and you should be eating good, like, like I was saying, four or five days after. If you still feel sore, then you need to eat a lot of protein, drink a lot of water, and you know, some a good amount of carbs, and then hit that muscle group again, but extremely light. I'm talking about so light that it's like, what are, what are you even doing? Because you're not trying to train the muscle. What you're trying to do is eat eat some uh, calorically dense food, especially high in protein and quality carbs, so that that food digests and the nutrients get into your bloodstream. And then what you're doing is you're going extremely light, high repetition, because you're trying to pump that nutritious blood into that particular um, muscle group 
that's that's has a prolonged soreness so four or five days later if you're still sore what your body's trying to tell you is bitch i need some more building blocks to repair this and get it back ready to go again so that's what that soreness is trying to communicate to you is that you need some protein in there you need some build, building blocks and you also need to carb load and fill it with glycogen but how do you think that it gets in there it gets in there with blood so i mean just blood in general has to go everywhere in your body but if you take the time to do one to three sets super light 30 reps or more when i say more me personally i'm doing 40 45 50 reps a set because i'm just trying to get the blood in there I'm trying to get that nutritious blood in there because what happens is the blood goes in there but the oxygen and the nutrients stay in the muscle and then the carbon dioxide and the blood comes back out so it's just a vehicle to get nutrients into that area so that you can recover all right let me get these 40s Damn, boy, I lost a lot of strength. Well, the PR used to be like 60 on the dumbbell curls. If you're under six foot and you're curling 60 pounds on the dumbbell, you're doing good, brother. You're doing good. All right, that's it, guys. This don't have to be much longer. You guys don't need to see me do the same damn weights over again in reverse. But, um, yeah, if you want to put some size on your biceps i recommend you try this on your next bicep day but just remember food water sleep is all just as important as the lift itself and the best lifts are the ones that you uh prepare for and then also recover from so in other words if you train in biceps on wednesday you should be preparing from tuesday with what you eat the night before how much water you're consuming how much rest you get and then you're also supposed to be doing all the post-workout stuff you know for the 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 the, the evening after so there's a lot that goes into it guys if you want to get the most out of it i'm just telling you what it is you guys can take it however you want to take it do whatever the hell you want to do with it a lot of people think they're going to like cut corners and do all this other stuff bro if you knew what the hell you was doing then you would already have the results you want so i'm, I'm telling you how to get the most out of it and get the most out of your time is not to just you know trip and fall into the gym whenever you feel like it and whenever you get around to it don't it, you're not going to get the most out of it like that if you want to get the most out of your workouts it's just like anything else you need to plan it you need to plan it and you need to prep it you want to have an amazing date with a girl yeah there's chances are that you could you know you could have a spontaneous date with a girl that goes really really well but you have a better chance if you plan it if everything's planned everything's taken care of already reservations are made you already slap fives with who you need to slap fives with you never you already slid whoever you got to slid a couple of bucks to set something up for it for you and make it make it legit you know what i mean preparation is how you get the best results man you know what i'm saying i'll give you a quick example the last time i took my girl to another country uh, what I did was, since I knew somebody in that city, I had that person go to the hotel before we arrived, like before we even landed, before we checked into the room, I had somebody go to the hotel for me and pay somebody to set the room up for her, you know, with the whole shebang, balloons, rose petals, you know, you know, the the special lavender uh, bubble bath and candles, you know, ready by the tub, all that good stuff. So when we get to the hotel and we check in, all that's already done and I'm, I'm with her. So now it's blowing her mind because it's like, wait, how did you, how, when did you do this? But preparation, bro, preparation, all right? So do what you guys gotta do, get your ass in the gym, make it happen, no excuses. 
get in the comments let me know what's up if you guys want to see any other body parts do what frankie did stop emailing me asking me you know random questions bro it's, it's not q a man i already told you guys we're, we're not doing the free thing anymore i know it's like i went to the zoo and started feeding the animals and now everybody's expecting all this like free advice and free stuff we're not doing that so um shout out to frankie appreciate the donation uh and the video request like i said we know what we're doing over here when it comes to bodybuilding so if you guys want some serious workout tips let me know what's up man i'm out of here peace that the guy is not supposed to do on the first date? I really don't know what he should not do because... Or what he did to you that you would never recommend? I think he started the conversation saying like, uh, I'm not looking for anything serious. Mm. Don't tell her you're not looking for anything serious. <laughs> He's not looking. But the truth is, I'm not looking for nothing serious. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> but it's different when you hear from a guy, you know? Why is it different? Because when you hear it from a guy, yes, it implies like, it implies what? That they just want to use you for your I body. But when the woman says it, what do you think it sounds like to us? But I would never tell him. This is something that I know, but I'm not going to tell him. So you, you can be we, dishonest? You should like let the thing like start. And so hold know. on, tell me. I just want to make sure that we're clear. So it's okay for okay, you. So so it's okay. It's a, this is important information. I, because guys, what you miss is that she had a date with a 31 year old guy and he was making some very amateur mistakes. She told him to meet her at the restaurant. She was having a couple of drinks with a friend waiting on him. Yes. And the guy says, I don't want to come in the restaurant. Come meet me at my car. <sighs> but it's the first time that they're, they're meeting each other. Exactly. Well, not the first time you met when you exchanged numbers. Yes. At the bank, he was handling money, and that's sexy. So now is the first time she's seeing him, other than that time. And the guy says, "Meet me at my car." I was like, "Your car? I don't know you. I'm not going to your car." But she goes. goes. But she went. And then I did it. She went right now. <laughs> here's the thing. Even though she still went to the car, it was still a fail. It's a fail. So you already give him a demerit, like a like a mark. It's a mark, right? But I think she didn't. She went to the car not because it was okay, but because you already slightly invested. I was curious. She's curious. Because I was already here. And it took a we month. month you arrived. Right, that's the part. So she's talking to this guy through text message for a month, <laughs> but he is so busy he cannot meet her. That's the valuable part, guys. He was busy which is interpreted as important and valuable and high status. Oh my God, maybe this so guy... so but he's spending fucking five minutes with me. Right, maybe this guy is oh, important man. because he's so busy. I don't know, he's too busy for me, which means he must be higher status than me. <laughs> right? But is he though? So it's the suspense, guys. You know, you're making me feel dumb in this video. No, it's not dumb. The, part, the, the point is you can hijack a woman's uh, biology by the way that you um, portray yourself, the first impression. Now, obviously, when they spend time together, he's not gonna be able to fake it at that point. You're gonna figure out, is he really as valuable or not? Or is he just scarce? But she's a beautiful woman, and I didn't have to have her tell me. I already knew that the men are attracted. She tells me she has a line of guys that are waiting on her. 
But I told her, I said, yeah, and those guys are going to be there waiting. That's why you ignore them, because you know they're going to be there. Right? So the, the moral of the story, guys, is don't be available. Do not be overly available. I tell you guys, if you are available, say that you're not. And then at the last minute, say, hey, you know what? I canceled some meetings or, 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 or had a client cancel on me. I have an opening. Is it too short a notice to see you? That way you get the best of both worlds. You, you create the illusion that you're, you're too busy for her and you're not too anxious. But at the same time, you still make it happen uh, before she loses interest and you know moves along to something else or another a better suitor comes. Because first of all, I personally, if it was me, hypothetically, I wouldn't have trusted her to be in that bar or that restaurant for that period of time because she's looking very good and other guys would have came and said, hey, how are you? What's your name? Can I buy you a drink? And then a guy texting, hey, why don't you come meet me at the car? She could have easily ignored that because she's being entertained by another attractive, handsome gentleman that's being assertive and... <laughs> but am I lying though? <laughs> so basically he left it up to chance and you don't want to leave it up to chance because if she invested a month texting with him, that means that he also invested a month texting with her. So you're hearing it from the horse's mouth. She's a beautiful horse, right? So, but you met this guy at his job, right? Yeah, the first time, yes. I was, I, I have a boyfriend at that mm -hmm. time, it was like six months ago. Mm -hmm. He, when in, we finished, he sent me a text message in my cell phone, but I, I never gave him any sign. Wait, he had your number professionally? Yes, and he did it. And he texted me, he was like, hey, can we one day like drink a coffee together? And I was like, sorry, but boyfriend, no. And like one month ago, I was single and he texted me again with something else. And I texted him, I remember, obviously, I could remember him. Did he at least say, I don't normally do this? No. <laughs> and I was like, Guys, hey, put that in there. If you, you meet, if you like, meet you women single, at work. You are single now? Yeah. And if you, I was like, If, yes, if you single. meet women at work, put that in there. When, when, when women hook up with guys the first night, they like to throw that in there. Oh, I don't normally do this. Guys, if you meet a woman at work, you need to put that in there. Hey, I don't normally do this, but you're very attractive and I'm just compelled to invite you to a dinner or a drink of just any way that I could possibly see you again. I'm so ashamed of myself because I should be a professional. I should not be approaching you know, women at my job, but ah, I just, I would be kicking myself if I didn't take the opportunity. Because you should be thinking, does he, often give his number out or call clients he could have lost his job for that yes i know i know that but right. this is something that i like about him because i was like wow that he took the risk me. yes I, I like it obviously i was kind of like women like oh. risk takers but, but i was super happy with my boyfriend and i was like no i can i can only have boyfriend and i think he liked it too because he was like wow she's like you know someone that you can trust but then i was single and okay, now we can see each other. Hey guys, this is also why women move on so quickly after a breakup. Because guys are always like, she's seeing another guy already? Dude, she knew that guy before you broke up. <laughs> she knew that guy before you broke up, fucker. So, hey, listen, attractive women have lines and unattractive women have shorter lines. What I'm trying to say is vagina equals line, right? The better looking the woman, the higher quality the guys at the front of the line. So you guys gotta be aware of this stuff. Don't let it upset you. Don't get you know insecure and jealous or whatever. Just continue to be the best you and keep leveling up. That way, if she does leave you, you'll be a better you the next time you see her. Alright? And don't tell girls to meet you in the parking lot when at nighttime yeah, when you do. hurt the first. Seriously, Listen, even if, even if you already knew her. You don't tell a woman, hey, come meet me in this dark parking lot. Exactly, this is bullshit. Come on. Come on. Yeah. My friend was like, come on. I'm mad. I'm upset because this guy, he was in there for a minute. So what should they do tomorrow when they text me? Oh, listen, you're going to be too busy texting with me. What are you talking about? <laughs> I thought we already, I thought this guy eliminated himself. What, the, what, what happened here? <laughs> So you see, you see, you see, they want the guy that plays hard to get. That's the one they want. Okay, let's see if you're going to text me. No, let's see if I'm going to play hard to get. <laughs> now I'm going to play games. I'll see you in a month in the parking lot. <laughs> I know what you like. 
you like to chase. All right, guys, we're gonna get out of here. I hope you, you learned something. And by the way, you're Brazilian, right? So I'm gonna be going to Rio looking for something like this. <laughs> that's what I do. That's a, that's how I threaten them. I say, listen, you know what? You acting up. I'm gonna go to the source. I'm gonna go to the source, and I'm gonna get a Brazilian girl from Brazil. Because once you get to America, you start acting all fancy, acting like you're better than me. <gasps> what is that supposed to mean? Who's gonna make you look stupid on YouTube? Who's your sister? I don't even know who her sister is. Oh my gosh. Guys, have I ever made a woman look stupid on YouTube? I think she's confusing me with Fresh and Fit. What the fuck is she talking about? Hey, I don't know. And I don't know who the hell her sister is. Yeah, but she acts like... Oh! Oh, oh, I know who that was. You see, this is how women operate. Now, you saw how she said I made her sister look stupid on YouTube? I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the link to the video and you're gonna see what she's talking about. Guys, that is the sister of the girl that was talking about spinning plates. She I interviewed her and she volunteered the information that I'm seeing this guy, but I'm also seeing two other guys. Exactly. How did I make her look stupid? She said that shit on camera. So she underestimated how popular my channel is becoming, and somebody sent it to her dude. And her dude got upset, so she called me and was like, take it down, take it down. I'm like, bitch, I'm not, why I'm taking it down? Because, because you, you volunteered the information that you're cheating on your boyfriend, and now you want me to take it down because he found out. Absolutely not. So that's what she's talking about. I did absolutely, you guys know that but video. But I that, like, you don't make like, look stupid. No, I didn't make her look stupid is what I'm trying to say. She, she admitted that she, she was, was looking, that she right that she was dating three guys at the same time um and she had, was talking about how she has a friend that she's really attracted to but they're just friends and the only reason why they don't hook up is because the guy doesn't want to hurt her so i mean come on you say that and then the, the boyfriend finds it hey <laughs> that's not my fault so anyway guys you know i'm not here to make girls look stupid i'm here to give you guys the truth so you I can better that. conduct yourself and then you don't end up losing opportunities like this home oh, let me show you the cleavage you see what i'm saying does that look like does that look like it should be alone in a parking lot at night do, listen do you want those boobies in a in a, in a parking lot at night yeah, yeah. anything could happen don't do i don't do that or you don't wear that if it was good until now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, Let me apologize. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. All right. We're out of here, guys. Be smart. Think twice.